What's going on, Charles Bodenston? So welcome to video one, all right? This is one of those things that I'm telling you right now is you'll see something in here and you'll say, this is really good, I like it, or you'll see something that affects you right now. You know how many times, three or four years later, I'll hear something again? Like I'll hear it three years ago and then I'll hear it today and I'm like, oh. And the reason being is that it didn't make sense at the time I first heard it. It made sense now because I was in a relationship or I started my own business or health issues or whatever. It's like, oh, that's what that person meant. So that's the same thing here is I'm telling you, go back and rewatch this. Go back and just say, you know what? That clicked. I now understand what he's talking about because there's going to be something in six months or a year that you've already implemented from these videos, but now you need to implement new things. So come back to these videos quite often. And I'm going to start with number one, which is, on the internet, I'll put this over here so it's better lighting, motivation gets you started, but good habits keep you going. This in of itself is the product worth. If you get this down, you will have a successful life in anything you're doing, and I'm telling you right now, motivation gets you started, good habits keep you going. And I'll, and I'll layer this, which is another gem, another softball pitch is, don't be perfect, be consistent. I want you to go to the gym five days a week for 10 minutes rather than one time for 50 minutes. Go to the gym five times a week for 10 minutes rather than one time for 50 minutes. Why do I say that? Because consistent, you already have habits. You already have habits on how you shower, what time you wake up, what do you say, when this happens, when that person says this, how do you react? You already have habits. We are creatures of habit, you already know that. However, motivation gets you started, but the thing is, what about when you're hungover or you're tired or you snooze your alarm or you, you already went to the gym five times and, and you're like, you know what, I already went five times or I already went four times or I was already good this week, I already made my sales calls. Still make your sales calls on the fifth day, still wake up on the weekends revved up and ready to go and go to the gym and eat well. I'm telling you right now, this has taken me, the reason it's number one is because this, this in of itself has taken me 10 years to understand. People always said, have systems, have consistency, do it every single day, habits, blah, blah, blah. And I never understood it. I had no idea what they were talking about, but now I do. And I can tell you right now, out of everything I'm gonna be talking about today, this is the number one, because you already have habits. You already have habits on, like I said, how you shower, how you brush your teeth, what you say, what you do, what you eat, how much coffee you drink, how much you spend, how much you make. You have habits every single day. What we want to do is get better habits, is to improve your habits, is to shorten the time between when you start and when you are now actually having a habit of waking up earlier or going to the gym or eating better or having uh, more happiness or a better relationship or anything you want in your life, more money, saving, saving more, we want to ensure that motivation just gets you started, but you have to understand that you're gonna hit the hiccups. When you're away and you come back and you're like, all right, I'll go to the gym. Actually, you know what? I'm a little kinda, nah, nah, not really. I'll go tomorrow, I'll go tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and then you say, oh, I'm tired. I'm still a little jet lagged. You know what, I'll go, I'll go the next day. Those are habits. The habits of skipping the gym is the same as the habits of going to the gym. Consistency is everything. Consistency is better than perfection. Go to the gym and have a terrible workout, but go to the gym. Make sales calls, terrible sales calls, but make the sales calls. Consistency over perfection. Number two, your actions are telling me what you're committed to. So someone will say, I, eat, I, I wanna eat healthy, or I eat healthy, or I dress better, or I wanna learn, or blah, blah, whatever you say. I, I don't care what you say. You know, what, what's that famous quote? Like, I can't, I can't hear what you're saying, I can only see what you're doing or something. It, uh, I, you know, what, what you say or what you do is so loud that I can't hear what you say. So in other words, if you say I'm committed to going to the gym but you only go once a week, or you only eat once a week, healthy food, you're not committed to health. Your actions speak way louder than what you say. And for me, I was all talk. I was all talk. But the thing is, there's something I'm gonna be talking about, which is you live into your talk. How, like, I'm gonna make money. 
You live into what your future self. However, tell me what your actions are. Tell me what you do on a daily basis. How often do you go to the gym, have a salad, drink water? How much water do you drink? Do you drink Coca-Cola? Do you smoke? Do you drink uh, alcohol? How much alcohol do you drink? How often do you go out? How many books do you read? How many seminars? How do you get better? Are you waking up earlier? What time are you waking up? How much coffee are you having? How much are you spending on that coffee? Those are your habits. Like I said in the first one, habits need consistency. Good habits need consistency because you already have habits. And like I said in this one is that your actions speak volumes. Your actions speak exactly what you're consistent and you're committed to in your life. Change your actions. Execution, it's all about that. Number three has to do with fear, which is if you're petrified and you're nervous and you think you may not get out alive, you're doing it right. When you're petrified and you're nervous, and you may not get out and you may not get out alive you're doing something right and obviously we're not talking about the fear of death and dying and everything like that you know a lot of people are like what do you mean like doing a triple backflip when i'm skiing no listen we we don't really have the fear of death like people 100 years ago let alone our ancestors on the plain of africa when we had to actually kill animals or avoid animals or we were the prey of animals or or healthy water or dying of of warmth or it's too hot out or it's too cold or dehydration or disease or anything child in uh, mortality rates were extremely high I'm talking about making a sales call. I'm talking about uh, approaching that pretty girl. I'm talking about that guy that's there and you say, hey, listen, I, I think you're cute or whatever the case is, whatever you're petrified, public speaking, making YouTube videos, telling your family, this is not the route that I wanna go down. I'm telling you right now, when you actually are fearful, that means you care. Because if you weren't fearful or you didn't care, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it. You, you wouldn't wanna see, like when I make sales calls, and I'm afraid that means this is good because I actually care. If you didn't care, you wouldn't do it. Like if I, if I was at a, a ballerina class, like I wouldn't care. Like I wouldn't be nervous. I, would, I mean, like I, I'm thinking about maybe I would be, but not really. And the reason is because I don't care. It's not my spice. To someone else who really, really deeply cares about being a ballerina and they go to the class, they would be nervous because they're like, I want to make the team or I want to make the cut or I want to make the play or whatever the case is. I want to be the best. I want to be the captain. I want to be number one, whatever it is. Try not for a sports team. Like if I don't make, say, a team that I don't care about, not a big deal to me. When you're petrified, that means you care. But that also means you're doing something right because that's what you should be doing. That all has to do with fear, which goes into number four, which is act as if. Act as if you're wealthy. Act as, act as if you are who you want to be. Conor McGregor talks about this all the time. Conor McGregor, he's like, hey, listen, by the way, I knew I was going to be the champion. I knew I was going to be the best. And that's the thing is that people always say, you know, like, why, like, fake it till you make it? 100%. 100%. I was two, in 2009, when I started in my real estate career, I dressed like shit, I ate like shit, I didn't really exercise, I had no friends that had money, it was a recession. There's no way I should be where I am right now. There's no possible way besides the fact that I faked it until I made it. I faked it, and by the way, you never make it. You never make it. Like as much as I'll say, fake it till you make it, there's no time where they're like, okay, you're done. Okay, you, you, you made enough money, your body's good enough, you don't have to go to the gym, your relationship's good enough, you don't have to work on it at all, you don't have to give any more gifts or say I love you or make love or anything like that. You don't have to do any of that, you're good. There's no making it. Eleanor Roosevelt said it perfectly. She said you start at the, at the beginning of life and there's this destination that you wanna to get to. So you get aboard the train, the train of life, and you're going and you're going along, you're going along, you're going along, and you get to the destination and you look back and you say, wow, I'm at the destination. This is the destination I wanted, which is by the way, the end of your life. Maybe not when you're dying, maybe not even just before your death, but when you feel that you have no more ability to produce and be productive. In other words, say you're in a nursing home and you're looking back on your life and you're like, wow, this was the destination. And Eleanor Roosevelt said, there's stops, there's stations along the way. 
It's about looking outside the window and enjoying the view. It's about enjoying those little moments of happiness and being happy because there is no destination. You, I'm never gonna stop reading, getting better, making more money, having better relationships, making YouTube videos or producing content. Like I'm never gonna stop. Like why would I stop? The only reason you stop is because you see no future, which is actually a video that I recently put out, which is three things, three unexpected things that I saw in self-development, which is positivity towards the future. A lot of people are like, they're negative towards the future, they don't see a better future, so they, don't, they stop. They don't, they don't see a reason to continue, a reason to make sales calls, a reason to produce content, a reason to actually be on social media. They don't see a reason. So act as if, fake it till you make it, act as if you're wealthy, act as if you're successful, smart, the best. That's the only way. You know, a, a perfect example is I was at a, you know, I don't know if you know Frederick Eklund, he's, in, he's on a Million Dollar Listing, I'm in New York City. So I met him a couple of times and really one of the best things that I ever heard him say in the beginning when he started out in real estate, he's like, I was like a, like I was, uh, he said he was a swan going across the water. From afar, you're like, wow, look at that beautiful swan just going across the, the water. However, underneath the water, he was just panicking, just just frenzy of feet, just going like this. The swan is just going across very nice and smooth underneath it's, it's just all utter chaos, and that's how he felt inside. However, to the surface, he was perfect. On the surface, he was arms weak and heavy. No, what is that Eminem song? All right, number five. Okay, so this is one of the biggest things. You know, I know Gary Vaynerchuk talks about hustling and five hours of sleep and four hours of sleep. Arnold Schwarzenegger talks about that he doesn't get that much sleep. Go to bed early. I have a nine o'clock, 9 p.m. hard stop deadline wherever I am. I only have one drink during the week, and that's it. I'm on a date. Uh, social event, I'm at a dinner, whatever, I always say I'm done at nine. So whatever we need to do, we need to do by nine. Make, you know, if we need to get a, a deal done or negotiations or sign a contract, we need to be done by nine o'clock. On a date, let's start at 7.30 because I'm not gonna be out that late. You know, and to be honest, most of my dates start at 6.30. You know, girls are like, oh my God, that's so early. I'm like, well, you know what? This is where, you, like I said, show me your actions. Are your actions, you're out till 11 o'clock? then you're not committed to waking up early. You're not committed to your health. You're not committed to a morning routine. You're not committed to being successful because you need your sleep. This is one of the things that I thought I didn't need sleep. And I'm telling you right now, you know, people are like, as you age, you need more sleep. Yeah, maybe a little bit, but it's not on Monday through Wednesday that you need your sleep. You need your sleep when it's Thursday and Friday and you're exhausted and you still need to make sales calls, you still need to go to the gym and your willpower is like, nah, uh, 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 I'm tired, you stay in bed, you snooze your alarm, you go online, you don't make sales calls, blah, 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 you don't study, you don't read your book, you don't go to the gym. That's when you need your willpower and that's all has to do with sleep. There is a huge correlation between willpower and the amount of sleep that you get. So go to bed early, wake up early. Get, your, get plenty of sleep. This is, this is something that's uh, when you're frustrated and you're stuck, write it down. When you're frustrated and you're stuck, write it down. What does this have to do with? This is, this is one of the biggest things because like I said in the intro video is that I make a lot of mistakes. I, I have a lot of failures. I, you know, like weekly, I'm like, that was a pretty stupid thing to do. When I'm frustrated with someone else, myself, uh, the company, a situation, way of life, anything, I write it down. Because when you keep it in your head, you think about it consistency, uh, constantly. But the thing is, when you write it down, it feels so much better. It feels so much better. You just get rid of it. It's on it, on paper. It's out of your mind. It, it gives you more of onboard processing power to make decisions on how to make it solution oriented, which we'll get into. You have to be solution oriented. If you're not solution oriented, in other words, a problem hits you and you bitch about it and you complain about it and you tell other people and you start drama and you blame other people, you can't go through life like that. You will never be successful because you need to work with people. You need, someone tells you a problem, you say, okay, what's the solution? How do, how do we get around this? What's the problem is, see it how it is, as Tony Robbins says, he, see it how it is, don't see, don't see it worse than it is, and then see how you're gonna fix it. That's what you need to do, all right? So we went through a lot there, all right? Go back, review the video, let's move on to the next.